On today's show, we go back in time to visit a historic duck camp, a place hunters hope to preserve old school traditions. This woodcarver whittled away until he won a world title. And then plug your ears, pumpkin chunkin' fires full steam ahead on the farm. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Hey everybody, welcome to Minnesota Bound. Once upon a time, duck hunting was Minnesota's most popular fall passions. Yeah, in the 40s and 50s, people flocked to western Minnesota to hunt at a place called the Duck Inn. As Travis Frank explains, duck hunting may look different today, but the legacy still remains the same. There goes three ducks right there. Hiding in cattails on his favorite duck marsh, Dave DeGonda waits for his shot. It's a ducky morning. Right there. <laughs> Not gonna buy it. Nearby, lifelong hunting buddies, Tom Conroy and George Efforts do the same. Ooh. Oh, those were blackbirds. Every once in a while you get snookered by blackbirds. Between them, decoys Bob and Water, they've named after an old friend. Wimpy's Waters, Winston Wimpy Peterson, Mr. Duck Hunter. Good name for good man. A man that helped make this part of Lake Mariah one of Minnesota's most popular duck hunting destinations. In the mid-1900s, both hunters and ducks flocked to Wimpy's waters. There's a duck right there. Today, a lone mallard signals a much different story. Seldom are the ducks. Even more seldom are the hunters that still pursue them. I think we're the only ones on the lake. I think we're the only ones out duck hunting in the county. It's all right, we got all the ducks to ourselves then. The coots are on the move. There's a, a decline. You don't see the young kids out as much. When we were young, golly, there were so many of us that would go out. This hunting trio has stayed together now for more than 50 years. I just love the marsh. I just love being out there early in the morning sights, the sounds, the smells, and just enjoying life, you know, wildlife. Those are geese. No bird baiter, no bird. Even on days when the birds outsmart them. It's been a long time since I haven't shot my gun. This is a very special place. It's God's gift to us all. A gift they cherish as much as two old duck shacks still standing back on shore. This is the old duck inn number one here. A cabin hand built by Wimpy Peterson's family. Duck inn one was the original farmhouse here and it was moved down here I think in 1928. This one became the headquarters of sorts for 3M executives who'd come down here and duck hunt. For decades, the Duck Inn housed high-class hunters. Wimpy hosted them, and eventually he built a second shack. Duck Inn 2 was built by Wimpy sometime in the 60s. Wimpy apparently just wanted his own place up there, and. Uh, that's where he and his buddies got together. Duck hunting season at the Duck Inns were a party, but over time, both cabins went silent and weather took its toll. They're a piece of history. It's important that we, we save as much of those kinds of things as we possibly can. 20 and a half by 39 and a half. Exactly why Tom and his hunting buddies 
brought their tools along on today's duck hunt. Two years ago, Wimpy passed on. Wimpy really wanted to have this place revived. And that's just what his friends are here to do. We're gonna do everything we can to make sure that it's in good shape. They're keepers of Lake Mariah's duck hunting past. It's like a legacy of, from Whippy. A legacy desperately waiting for the next generation. The potential here is just tremendous. I mean, look at this view we have here. A view with a hundred years of stories and hopefully hundreds more yet to be told. Thanks to three duck hunters giving a lonely duck shack new life. Still ahead, steady hands make for a world champ. Meet one of Minnesota's best wood carvers next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Rapala Ice Force, Star Bank, and by Pearson Salted Nut Rolls. Decoy carving is a hobby to some, but turning a hobby into a world champion title takes chipping away to perfection. For the love of ducks and woodworking, Tom Fleming started to carve. Well, I started when I was 12 years old. Grew up on a dairy farm just outside of Cosmos, Minnesota. So my dad had all the woodworking tools, building things, birdhouses, benches, always nailing boards together, cutting things out. So at a very young age, we were making things out of wood. One year we went to, uh, out down to my aunt and uncle's down in Blue Earth. And on the way we stopped at a mall and there was a bunch of carvers in the halls of the mall displaying and working on things. For Tom, it was a life-changing moment. I was 12 years old, asked for carving tools for Christmas. It was also the beginning of a lifelong passion. Well, I moved down to the Twin Cities and I seeked out if any carving clubs were around and I ended up getting pushed in the direction of the Minnesota Decoy and Wildfire Carving Club. Tom says meeting other carvers made his artist talents grow. I think I've been lucky along the way of meeting the right people that showed me how and got me started. So I made a decoy and went to my first competition at a national show and I thought it was the best thing I've ever ever made or ever could make and ended up not placing. It was, it was disappointing, but it kind of drove me to work harder. Today, Tom is a three-time world decoy carving champion. turning a block of wood into a feathered creature that looks so real, it might just fly away. All the World Championships, they judge on three basic things. The sculpture itself, or the shapes, anatomy, colors, and then flotation. I carved a rig of redheads and ended up getting second in the world in 2010. And then it's like, well, I gotta Got to get better. So in 2011, I finally won the world championship, my first one with the uh, long tail ducks. A bittersweet win, considering the man and his inspiration for getting started wasn't there to see it. It was amazing. Um, I lost my dad the year before, so putting hard work in. Wish he was here, but he uh, think he knows. Also amazing is the transformation of a chunk of wood into a lifelike duck. So here's a stockpile of tupelo wood I have on hand for creating decoys. It's very lightweight. I also use white cedar wood uh, for my working decoys. First thing I do is uh, draw a pattern of a duck. So here's the side profile of a mallard, and then the top profile. When I'm done carving them, I'll take it apart and then hollow it out. Next, the real transformation begins. 
It comes down to colors. I, they have to look real out in the outdoors. So when I'm painting, I'm painting in my studio here. Then I'll go outside, look at them in a sunny day, look at them in a cloudy day. Neighbors probably think I'm nuts. What's he doing out there? But I'm getting the colors where I need, need to get them because it's very important. And everyone has their different style. I always start painting from the tail to the bill. All these little squiggly lines are vermiculation. That's what they're called on a duck. And how I make them is a, it's a metal comb. So I'll put a heavy base of paint on there, and then I'll comb through it. Yes, his flock of carved birds do fly above the rest. This is a 2016 Best in World shooting rig, a challenging piece that was fun to do. Fun, yes, but there's no quit in this carver. And then I'm already working ahead here. That's what happens when kids go off to college. I look at it as my retirement plan. I'm guessing it's time to fry them up. Still ahead, Laura and Jim get wild in the kitchen. And later, Pine Haven puts the punch in pumpkins. Closed captioning on Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut. Chef Jim Kinberg from Crave Restaurants is back for a while in the kitchen today. Chef Jim, I am so excited to be cooking with you once again. Um, what are we making this afternoon? We're doing pheasant egg rolls. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Now that's really unique. Yeah, well, everybody loves egg rolls and pheasant. Come on, Absolutely. it's a natural. It is a natural. I see some pheasant marinating over there. You are correct. So we have some beautiful pheasant fillets, brush. Uh, you'll notice they're boneless, skinless and then they're soaking in the marinade. So the marinade, very simple. It's soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and that's it. All right, what's our next step? Our next step, now that the pheasant is marinated, we're gonna pound it thin. So we're gonna cover this in a little plastic wrap, and that's gonna prevent that marinade from splashing all over your kitchen. That would not be good. I'm assuming I need a gentle touch here, yes? Gentle touch, yes. That's exactly what you wanna see. See how it's just kinda of laying flat, it's relaxing. Got medium high heat, nice sizzle. And how long does it take to cook on each side? No more than two minutes when we pound it thin like that. Mm -mm -mm. This one's gonna be good, Jim. I can smell the ginger and the garlic already. That smells amazing. You notice I got the same pan, the pan we cooked the pheasant breast in. All the flavors in there. All the flavors in the bottom of that pan. And we're gonna saute the mushrooms in that. Just like that. Now it's time to combine all of our ingredients. So we've got the warm pheasant. Thanks. We want to put the warm mushrooms in there. And Laura, we've got some green onions there. That's good. And then I've got some cabbage slaw there. There's some carrots in there. There's some cilantro, but cabbage is the, the main ingredient. Look at how pretty that looks. All right, I think we are ready to uh, actually roll the egg rolls. This is the fun part. So we've scrambled the egg. And I just want you to about an inch in on each side. You don't have to be too good? careful. You can just crank okay. it on there. Right. So we're going to grab about three ounces. I want the filling going across this way. Dang. Right in the center, right in the center. So we're going to start at that bottom corner. We're going to lift that up. And we're going to fold that one in. Fold that one in. And here's where we want to make sure it's kind of tight, but not too tight. If it's too tight, it'll explode. Perfection. There we Perfection. Go. Now I'm guessing it's time to fry them up. It is, time to, time to get cooking. <laughs> so I'm gonna be very careful when I'm placing those in there. I don't wanna splash. Yes. And you also don't wanna overcrowd that pan. About so, a minute each side? Well, total cooking time is usually at least three minutes. It is officially pheasant hunting season, and Chef Jim, I thank you for sharing your wild harvest with us today. And You're very welcome. Making the delicious egg rolls, and I'm ready for a taste test. Are you? Yeah, definitely, and these look great. I'm dip it in the sauce here. So good. They are really good. Don't forget, you can find this delicious recipe and more on mnbound.com. Nice work. Thanks, you too. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Everybody knows I like to keep a really clean truck. 
But if you own a pickup with a topper, one of the toughest parts to get clean is that area in between the back window of the truck and the front area of the topper. Literally, there's a gap like that, and it's really tough to get in there and keep your windows clean. Well, this has to be one of the best tips we've heard in a long time. Our friends at Radco know all about the issue, and they have a solution. It's this stuff, Rain-X. Rain -X is a cheap window treatment. It helps water beat up and keeps dirt and dust from getting on the glass. They say go through the trouble if you clean those windows to put this stuff on. Once, maybe twice a year, if you put Rain-X on, that gap stays nice and clean and you don't have to deal with dirty windows. Trust me, I've tried it and it works. Straight ahead, a Minnesota bound classic with the bank. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by your local carrier dealer, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back to the fall of 2004, to an autumn day where we discovered that pumpkins are a ton of fall fun, especially when you try to launch them towards a harvest moon. You know, I think people in Minnesota anyway really love fall. It's my favorite season, yeah. I like all the leaves and I like the colder temperatures and yeah. And there's something special about a farm in the fall. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. <laughs> can you say goat? <laughs> Well, we're out at Pine Haven Farm in Wyoming, Minnesota, where we do our antique farm and harvest festival every fall. Let's see both of them now, see? And we have just tons and tons of family fun stuff here. Oh, it's great. Yeah, you know, it's it's cheap and you got uh, the best petting zoo in the area. Hey, what's that thing? What's that thing? She was up there looking at us, Trish. Look at him, he's huge. What do you think, Sam? Did you like the petting zoo? Yeah. Just so many good, fun, outdoor things to do. Ways to celebrate fall in Minnesota out on the farm. We all love the animals and we love the cannon. We go out to our pumpkin fields and we look for some nice, round, solid pumpkins. I think the pumpkins fly here. We just set it right in the end of our barrel here. How far do you think it's going to go? The bullseye. Where? The bullseye? Oh, oh I think it's going to go farther than that. Get it nice and soapy. And we push our pumpkin all the way into our barrel. <gasps> oh, he's got to push it down and get it way yeah. down there. I think That's it's cool. really cool, yeah. Oh, my gosh, there it goes, way up in the air. People, well, it's just going to go 100 yards, 200 yards, maybe two football fields. How far do you think it's going to go, Sam? When they see it come out, I mean, you hear people swear that don't usually swear. Now this pumpkin here will not fly without you guys making some noise, all right? All right. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Ten. Nine. Eight. eight seven, seven. Six. six five, five. Four. four three, three. Two. two one. one. Whoa! Way out there. Look at how far that went, Sam. Wow, I didn't expect it to go that far. That was amazing. That's cool, that's cool. After four years, I still love telling people about it. I still love watching it. I wouldn't mind seeing another one. <laughs> Brings the whole family out there. Really enjoy it. It's a way to celebrate the season. That cannon is still blasting away at Pine Haven Farm. Yeah, to see is to believe. Trust me, it's quite a bang. Well, that about does it for us this week. Until next week, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors.
Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.